From its birth, America has always been a multinational state. It certainly is today, but it was also back at the time of the American Revolution. And I thought, given the period we're going through, our times of trouble, you might call it, it would be a cautionary tale to look at the fate of other multinational states during this same period of history. Great Britain itself was a multinational state, the United Kingdom. You had English, you had Welsh, you had Cornish people, you had the Scots, you had the Irish. What held in England together, the United Kingdom together, and to a great extent still holds it together today? Monarchy? Church of England, and uh, its constitution, its concept of, of government, you know, parliament and the governed and separation of powers, constitution, written, unwritten, whatever you want to consider it. And so far, England's held together. Of course, they lost Ireland. There's a separatist movement in Scotland. There's a smaller one in Wales. I don't think the Cornish people want to go anywhere. But so far, they've held together, although they've lost almost all their other colonies. If you look at it that way, it's fallen apart. Another multinational state in the modern period was uh, the Austro-Hungarian monarchy, the dual monarchy. You had uh, Germans, Hungarians, Czechs, Slovaks, Slovenes, Croats, uh, Bosnians, Serbians, Herz Herzegovinians, you know, Montenegrins, all those groups. What held them together? Monarchy. That was about it. They didn't have a common language. They didn't have a common ethnicity, obviously. They didn't have a common religion, although most of them were Catholics, but not all. And when the monarchy lost its legitimacy during the First World War, toward the end of a great war, it fell apart. The Austro-Hungarian Empire splintered into you know, its component parts. You had Austria, Hungary, Czechoslovakia, what became parts of Yugoslavia, it collapsed. Another multinational empire was the Ottoman Empire. You had Christian Jews and mostly Muslims. You had Arabs, you had Turks. You had all kinds of Balkan people who were in there at one point or another. What held the Ottoman Empire together? It was Islam. The Sultan was also the Khalifa. But what happened at the end of the Great War? Sultanate lost its legitimacy. People lost faith in Islam, and the Ottoman Empire disintegrated. The Balkans were, for a great extent, except for a little strip north of Istanbul, north of the city, all gone. Turkey became, a, at the time, a secular national state, and the Arabs split off into little component parts usually under the thumb of the, the British or the French. So the Ottoman Empire didn't survive. Once its controlling character, the Sultanate, the Caliphate, collapsed, lost its legitimacy. Another multinational empire, I should say empires, because it was a multinational empire twice, was Russia. The first was the Russian Empire of the Tsars. You had, I'm not even going to list all the ethnicities that were part of the, that Russian empire. What held that together? The monarchy. And what happened when the monarchy was gone? It fell apart. It collapsed into its component parts. Out of those ashes came the Bolsheviks, who over a period of time in the Civil War in the 1920s, and even through World War II, finally put most of those pieces back together, minus Finland. They retook the, the, uh, the Baltic states, parts of Poland that they used to have, uh, other places, you know, in the Central Asia and elsewhere. And they put together a new multinational Russian empire, you could say. And what held that together? Communism. You know, whether you were a, 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 a Ruthenian or a Pole or a uh, Kazakh, the thing that united everybody in the Soviet Union, the union of the Soviet socialist republics, was that they all adhered to and believed in communist 
ideas, concepts, which bridged nationality. You didn't matter what nationality you were, you could still be a member of the party and a communist. One of the states that was put together after the First World War, of course, was Yugoslavia, which included uh, Serbians, Bosnians, Albanians, Macedonians, Montenegrins, Slovenes, Croats, probably forgetting a few of the nationalities. There were actually some Hungarians in there and a few uh, Germans. Uh, that held together. But what held it together? Again, like Soviet Russia, communism. What happened when communism collapsed in Yugoslavia? What happened when communism was no longer the cement that held that multinational state together? It fell apart. Civil war ensued, which continued for years. You had massacres, Srebrenica, other things like that. It was, it was terrible. These people were at each other's throats. So again, a multi, you see a multinational state and it falls apart. Even one of the other successor states of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, Czechoslovakia, has recently fallen apart. After communism left, was, fell apart and the Czech, Czechoslovakian Republic became free, no longer, communism wasn't there to hold it together. The Czechs and the Slovaks separated into two different states. Now, if you look at the history of all these multinational states, they're all held together by something, by a monarchy, by a religion, or by a set of ideas, concepts of government, self-governance. And if you look at the history, when you eliminate those elements which held those multinational states together, they broke apart, usually in violence. And it's true of basically all of them except, so far, Great Britain and the United States. But all the others have fallen apart violently. So if you look at these trends, I mean, it, it's almost universal. They don't make it. Multinational states only hold together as long as there's a, an element, a concept, something, some principles. You know, what, it could be monarchy, it could be religion, it could be a set of political ideas like communism. But if you eliminate the things that hold it together, the multinational state spins apart. It's like gravity disappears and everything starts flying all over the place. We all know what used to hold us together. I've been talking about this in innumerable videos, you know, some coherent concepts of governance, common institutions, beliefs, understandings, history, philosophy, economics, all these things. They're all disintegrating. We can blame one side or the other for why they're disintegrating, but whoever's to blame, there's no doubt that they are disintegrating. And that's why I've said often, you know, there's no, what are the reasons? Why are we still together? What holds us together beyond habit and inertia? You know, I, I've had some criticism for that, but I've never had anybody explain to me what will hold us together. What does hold us together beyond, you know, inertia and habit? You may not like to hear that, but what else is there? Between right and left, what unites us? Oh, well, we're all Americans. Which means what? What does it mean to be an American? I know what it used to mean. But I don't think those principles are held broadly in this country anymore. And that's my point. If you look at multinational empires, when the, the, the overarching concept or principle that holds the multinational state together commit suicide through its actions in something like the Great War for the Austro-Hungarian monarchy, or is eliminated, dies off, whatever, however you want to look at it. When that happens, the thing falls apart. The state falls apart. And we see it happen time and time and time again. It's interesting that the two multinational states that have held on 
are Great Britain and the United States, which used to be related to one another and fell apart. But how much longer? We see the strains in Britain, you know, with the Scottish nationalists wanting to go. And if they go, what's going to be next for Welsh? And we look at what's going on in this country, and we should be afraid. Because we are a multinational state. The concept of Americanism, which used to hold us together, has been destroyed. It doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It exists in roughly half the population, but the other half doesn't believe in it. And that's what happens when there is no overarching concept that both sides accept. They split. Czech, Czechoslovakia minus communism becomes the Czech Republic, the Slovak Republic. Austro-Hungarian monarchy minus the monarchy becomes you know, Czechoslovakia, Austria, Hungary, all those other little countries, and ultimately becomes part of Yugoslavia. That's our future. Unless we reinforce and strengthen that concept of Americanism, which holds us together. But if anybody knows what's going on in our schools, that's not happening. Far from it. You go to a university today, and it, it's been true since I was in school in the 70s. And basically, the concepts of Americanism are constantly undermined. They're constantly challenged. And you get this pounded into your head time and time again. And if you're not able to fight it, if you're not able to do your own reading and do your own thinking, that's how you come out, thinking like that. And if you're a teacher trainee, you go out and you start teaching your students, K to 12, the same things. And ultimately, once that's destroyed, there's, we're going to go the way of the Ottoman Empire, the Austro-Hungarian Empire, or the Tsar's Empire. We're going to fall apart. That's what I think. That's what worries me. Not too much because I don't have long to go. I'm not going to be here much longer anyway. I'm not going to have to worry about it. But if I was younger, if I was my anything under 50, I'd be deeply worried about what's happening in this country. And what's really scary, it's not the political battle between the right and the left. It's the fact that nobody's addressing the fundamental cause of why we've lost our sense of Americanism, which is related to higher education. You know, fish rots from the head. If nothing's done there, nothing's going to change. It's just going to get worse until we end up like Yugoslavia after the collapse of communism, the death of Tito. That's what I think. Let me know what you think in a comment. Got something out of the video? Give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you can. Hit the notification button so you know when I post new videos. Share the video with your friends. And until the next time, keep fighting.